Hello everyone, this is Sridhar, author of Moment of Signal. Whether you're in Brazil or Burma, Delhi or Denver, Kigali or Kenya, William Henry Gates III, or popularly known as Bill Gates, needs no introduction. Born in 1955, he's an American business magnate, investor, author, philanthropist, and humanitarian. He is best known as the principal founder of Microsoft Corporation. In 1975, Gates and Paul Allen launched Microsoft which became the world's largest PC software company. Gates led the company as chairman and CEO until stepping down as CEO in January 2000, but he remained chairman and became chief software architect. In June 2006, Gates announced that he would be transitioning to a part-time role at Microsoft and full-time work at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the private charitable foundation that he and his wife, Melinda Gates, established in 2000. He stepped down as chairman of Microsoft in February 2014 and assumed a new post as technological advisor to support the newly appointed CEO, Satya Nadella. Gates is one of the best known entrepreneurs of the personal computer revolution. Since 1987, Gates has been included in the Forbes list of the world's wealthiest people from 1995 to 2017. He held the Forbes title of the richest person in the world. Currently, he is worth a little over $100 billion. However, since October 27, he was surprised by Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos. Early life, Gates was born in Seattle, Washington, and he comes from a stable family background. His father was a prominent lawyer and his mother served on the board of directors in a very big company. Early on in his life, Gates observed that his parents wanted him to pursue a law career. Gates was a very smart kid and at 13, he enrolled in the Lakeside School, a private preparatory school and wrote his first software program. Gates took an interest in programming the GE system in basic and was excused from math classes to pursue his interest. He wrote his first computer program on this machine, an implementation of tic-tac-toe that allowed users to play games against the computer. Gates was fascinated by the machine and how it would always execute software code perfectly. Gates, Paul Allen, Rick Weiland, and Kent Evans were all got banned to use computer after it caught them exploiting bugs in operating system to obtain free computer time. But at the end of the ban, the four students offered to find bugs in the CCC software in exchange for extra computer time. The following year, Information Sciences Incorporation hired the four Lakeside students to write a payroll program in COBOL, providing them computer time and royalties. After his administrators became aware of his programming abilities, Gates wrote the school's student information system software to schedule students in classes. He modified the code so that he was placed in classes with a disproportionate number of interesting girls. At age of 17, Gates formed a venture at Allen called Trafford Data to make traffic counters based on the Intel 8008 processor. In 1972, Bill Gates served as a congressional page in the US House of Representatives. Gates was a National Merit Scholar when he graduated from Lakeside School in 1973. He scored 1590 out of 1600 on the Scholastic Aptitude Test. Set and enrolled at Harvard College in the autumn of 1973. While at Harvard, he met fellow student Steve Ballmer. The Gates left Harvard after two years while Ballmer would stay and graduate from there. Years later, Ballmer succeeded Gates as Microsoft CEO until 2014, as we all know. Gates dropped out of Harvard and he had talked over their decision with his parents, who were very supportive of him after seeing how much their son wanted to start his own company. He contacted Micro Instrumentation and Telemetry Systems, MITS, the creators of the new microcomputer, to inform them that he and others were working on a basic interpreter from the platform for the platform. 
In reality, Gates and Allen did not have an altar and had not written code for it yet. They merely wanted to gauge Mitt's interests. Mitt's president, Ed Roberts, agreed to meet them for a demo and over the course of a few weeks, they developed an Altair emulator that ran on a mini computer and then the basic interpreter. The demonstration held at Mitt's offices was a success and resulted in a deal with Mitt's to distribute the interpreter as Altair Basic. It was Allen who named their partnership Microsoft, a combination of microcomputer and software. During Microsoft's early years, all employees had broad responsibility for the company's business. Gates, however, oversaw the business details, but continued to write code as well. In the first five years, according to Bill Gates himself, he personally reviewed every line of the code the company shipped and often rewrote parts of it as he saw fit. Windows Microsoft Microsoft launched its first retail version of the famous Microsoft Windows in 1985. In August of the following year, the company struck a deal with IBM to develop a separate operating system called OS2. What about his management style? From the Microsoft's founding in 1975 until 2006, Gates had primary responsibility for the company's product strategy. He gained a reputation for being distant from others. As early as 1981, an industry executive complained in public that Gates is notorious for not being reachable by phone and for not returning phone calls either. Another executive recalled how he showed Gates a game and defeated him 35 of 37 times. But when they met again a month later, Gates won or tied every game. He had studied the game until he solved it. That is a competitor for you. Gates was an executive who met regularly with Microsoft's senior managers and program managers. It first-hand accounts of these meetings the managers described him being verbally combative. He also berated managers for perceived holes in their business strategies or proposals that placed the company's long-term interests at risk. He interrupted presentations with such comments as, that's the stupidest thing I have ever heard. And why don't you just give up your options and join the peace corporations? The target of his outburst then had to defend the proposal in detail until hopefully Gates was fully convinced. When subordinates appeared to be procrastinating, he was known to remark sarcastically, okay, I'll do it over the weekend. In 1985, Jerry Parnell wrote that when he watched Gates announce Microsoft Excel, something else impressed me. Bill Gates likes the program not because it's going to make him a lot of money, but because it's a neat hack. On June 15, 2006, Gates announced that over the next two years, he would transition out of his day-to-day -day role to dedicate more time to philanthropy. We need to talk about his philanthropy. In 2000, Gates and his wife combined three family foundations and Gates donated stock valued at $5 billion to create the charitable Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which was identified by the Funds for NGOs company in 2013 as the world's wealthiest charitable foundation with assets reportedly valued at more than 34.6 billion US. Gates has credited the generosity and extensive philanthropy of David Rockefeller as a major influence. As of 2007, Bill and Melinda Gates were the second most generous philanthropists in America, having given over 28 billion US to charity. The couple plan to eventually donate 95% of their wealth to charity. That's something really astounding and brilliant. Gates is an avid reader and the ceiling of his large home library is engraved with 
a quotation from the great Gatsby. He also enjoys playing bridge, tennis and golf. Despite his wealth and extensive business travel, Gates usually flew coach in commercial aircraft until 1997 when he brought a private jet. In a BBC interview, Gates claimed, I have paid more tax than any individual on earth and gladly so. I have paid over 6 billion US in taxes. That's a massive amount. He is a proponent of higher taxes, particularly for the rich. Gates days are planned for him on a minute by minute basis, similar to that of US president's schedule. He also wrote two books. This is about Bill Gates and we'd like to meet with yet another great leader in the upcoming series. Thank you and you have a great day.